Welcome to the Super Bowl 58 pregame and the Apple Music Super Bowl 58 halftime show press conference. From Apple Music Radio and the host of the Nadeska Show, please welcome Nadeska Alexis. Good morning. I'm Nadeska and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Super Bowl 58 pregame and Apple Music Super Bowl 58 halftime show press conference. At Apple, we love music. We're passionate about celebrating and supporting artists, about elevating conversations around music and giving fans worldwide the best one-of-a-kind experiences like this one, which is streaming live globally on Apple Music. We're thrilled to be joining the NFL and Rock Nation to bring the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show to life. And of course, we can't wait to see Usher's headlining performance. It's been 30 years in the making. We're gonna chat with Usher in just a few minutes. Right now, let's kick it off with the pregame. I'm honored to introduce American Sign Language interpreter Dale Nehmeyer and three American Sign Language performers appearing at this year's Super Bowl on behalf of the National Association of the Deaf. Performing America the Beautiful is Angel Pinheiro. Performing the National Anthem is Daniel Durant and performing Lift Every Voice and Sing, Shaheen Sancho. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> so I know for all of you, it's your first time signing at the Super Bowl, but uh, Shaheen, I heard a little rumor that you've actually met our headlining performer before. Can you tell us about that? For sure, yeah. So I met Asher in the past. Uh, I taught him some American Sign Language, how to sign his name, and he's a quick learner, I'll say that. Uh, he learned American Sign Language and he's doing great. That really does not surprise me. He seems like a man who can do it all. <laughs> uh, Angel, you'll be signing with uh, Post Malone. How are you feeling about that? Uh, I am so, so excited. Uh, not just to sign America the Beautiful with Post Malone, but to be on one of the most famous platforms in the world at the Super Bowl. So just to share my art, I know that uh, my hands and his voice, his voice together are just going to be amazing. Uh, I can't wait to share that with everybody. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be so much fun. And the songs that you're signing are so powerful. They evoke a lot of emotion uh, in people. So I'm wondering, as you were rehearsing, what were you feeling? How about you, Daniel? Yeah, let's see. How I was feeling during rehearsals. Uh, with the National Anthem. It's such an inspiring song, so proud to be an American, the history there, how we became independent, how we are serving the country. It's just an amazing song. And I will say, as I started to rehearse, I just had goosebumps. I cannot wait to just make it happen on Sunday. So looking forward to it. Right, and you know, as you were rehearsing, did you notice anything about these songs or learn something that maybe you hadn't before, Shaheem? Or Angel. Shaheem, go ahead. Well, what I learned, just trying to figure out the meaning of the songs, how to make that connection with the song. Uh, obviously, I'm deaf, and of course, I've never heard that song before. So I started learning about the song, right? And so learning the meaning behind it, memorizing it, and how different it is, just feeling the vibe. Uh, but never give up, right? There's no excuses. Just keep on rehearsing. No excuses. I love that. Angel? So, to be honest with you, I did not know uh, what America the Beautiful was until I started, I was selected by the National Association of the Deaf in Love Sign, and I started reading up on it about America the Beautiful, and it was written by a female, and I did not know that, and I think that's so empowering to know that. And not just that, but this is a song, and in the song she talks about how she was so present, how she really experienced life, you know, sometimes it's just so easy. You're going through life and you're so busy, you're not taking it in. You forget to take a moment and breathe, you know? Uh, so we need to enjoy life and experience things. So uh, that was a huge benefit for me. I, I, I loved learning about the song. See, I just learned something new as well. How about for you, Daniel? Yeah, so the last time I sung the national anthem, I think it was in elementary school, <laughs> right? So uh, after that, of course, you know, always thankful to the Super Bowl to provide the interpreters at all these different performances for many, many years, I watched it every year. A lot of those folks are my friends. And so now here we are, it's my turn, and I feel so honored to be here. And I feel like this song, the learning about it and rehearsing it, 
you know, it's almost like a playground for me, right? Just learning all the different aspects, all the different signs, and I, I just want to do a great job and play around with it and, and just give my interpretation of that song. You're definitely going to do a great job, and I know your family and friends are going to be so proud rooting for you at home. And, you know, I know for all of you, and, and Shaheem especially, you're very passionate about bridging the gap between the hearing and the deaf community. So I wonder for all of you, does this feel like just one of the biggest opportunities possible to do that? Oh, for sure. I feel like it's such a great opportunity for all of us because I want people to see how deaf people can work together, how we can dance, how we can incorporate sign language in all these different ways, uh, inclusion, showing the world that anything is possible. And I think what's really fascinating is that with us doing the pregame, right, it's just a completely different translation uh, from the halftime show. It's just so different. Uh, different artists, uh, just a beautiful way to express these songs. And, and I know, Shaheem, once you're on stage at the halftime show, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're just going to do it. You're going to be having people dancing in their seats. Oh, yeah, Shaheem is also an incredible dancer. So, look, all I can say now is have fun. We'll be watching on Sunday. Just go out there and enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now we continue our pregame lineup. Please help me to welcome the pregame artists singing on Sunday, Reba McIntyre, Post Malone, and Andrew Day. Good morning. Look at you three. Good morning. Come have a seat here. Come get comfortable with me. Hi. How are y'all doing? <laughs> and they're all here to see you. That's nice. <laughs> you three look really, really good together. I think if you drop the country pop rock R&B soul album, I would definitely stream that on Apple Music. Oh, well, thanks. That's a great idea. Love that. Planting, planting a little seed for you. So, Reba, you have done everything from Broadway to TV award shows. You are a veteran. You've even sung the anthem before, but never at the Super Bowl. What does this moment mean to you? Well, it means a lot. You're right. I haven't sung the national anthem at the Super Bowl. I am honored beyond words to be chosen to get to sing it. It means that I get to sing a very special song uh, for all Americans, people all around the world who have really worked so hard for our freedom and to give us peace. And uh, as I said earlier, it's not about me walking out on, I'm the representation of this song and I'm just honored to get to sing it. It's a good one. I've been doing it for 50 years and I'm really proud to get to sing it. Oh, I can't wait to see it. And this man sitting next to you, Post Malone, you've had a few anthemic hits in your, in your career. I mean, something real, yeah, is even- very generous. <laughs> is something real is an official you know, college football anthem either. So how does it feel to be performing a bit more of a classic anthem on Sunday? Nerve wracking. Um, I'm very nervous, um, but excited. I'm excited. Um, I don't know. It's just fun uh, and super epic to be able to go out there and, and sing. And um, a song so many beautiful artists have sang before on, on this stage. And um, I'm just going to do my best. Just do my best and give it what I got. So. Your best is going to be perfect. Thank you And I can't you. imagine you actually being nervous. But so for all of you mm. to, uh, Andre, what, how do you prepare for a performance like this, especially before you step onto the field? I'm asking for a shy friend who has stage fright but still does it anyway. How do you really get in the zone right before a performance like this? Um, I usually have a nervous breakdown before I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <check. laughs> Sometimes I'm kidding. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I'm super nervous too, you know, I, I'm, you know, I think you just, you kind of want to honor the moment and the song and, and you want to do well, you know what I mean, of course, but it's really, I think as Reba said, it's just about, you know, like honoring the moment and um, just being a vessel. Um, I prepare by just, for me, just trying to make sure my voice is in good shape, trying to make sure I'm taking care of myself, trying to make sure I, I know all the words and what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, and then prayer. Prayer is a big thing for me, you know, as an artist. So that's, that's usually how I prepare, and I probably won't be much different on Sunday. So it sounds like a good preparation routine. Reba, since you've been doing this <laughs> such a long time, do you have any tips? How do you prepare? 
Well, I prepare by being prepared. <laughs> I've been singing the national anthem in the shower <laughs> when we get in the car. Rex, my boyfriend, is a huge football fan, played all sports when he was going to school. And so he'll say, okay, sing it one more time. I said, I think I know the words real good right now, so I'm all right. But just to be prepared and know that everybody's going to be singing it with me. Mm -hmm. That helps. You know, if I know if they're singing along and they're remembering and having fun too, that's easier on me. But just to be prepared when you walk out there. And Preparation is key. It's very the one, key. It's the one thing you can control. Absolutely. Right? That's what I've learned. So, Post, are you also singing in the shower before? Well, yeah, that's right. I, I do the same thing. I sing it all the time, and my family just tries to get me to shut up. But... <laughs> they get sick of hearing you do that. <laughs> you know, Andrea, you're singing, you're performing Lift every voice and sing, with, AKA the Black National Anthem. I've been singing this since I was in elementary school, so I will be in that stadium singing off key along with you. Um, but for people who are hearing this, it's harmony, it's harmony, it's, it's called I harmony. mean, you're, you're so kind. I'm a terrible singer. That's why you're doing it and not me. But um, for people who will be hearing it for the first time, and it's such a big audience at the halftime show, how does it feel for you to be sharing such an important piece of our culture with the world? Um, it feels, it's a great question. It's a heavy question. <laughs> <laughs> and you can be honest. Um, We're all friends here. Yeah, no, I, I think, first of all, it's more than anything, it's an honor. You know, it's exciting. And um, it feels intentional. I like to do things with intention and with purpose. And, um, you know, I think I, I kind of referenced my mom and I were talking about it the other day. And she said, you know, ultimately the song is a hymn. And I'm like, it is. It's a hymn of triumph, you know. And, um, that's what I want people to encounter when I sing the song. I want them to know that like, we have victory and we have peace already, you know what I mean? And, and so um, I don't, you know, I, I definitely want, um, it just, it feels like there's an honor. And it's, it, you know, it's funny, there's a burden, but it's not so much a burden. I keep telling people, I just really want to diminish myself as much as possible. And for me, spiritually, just make space for a move of God. And that's what I'm hoping happens, you know? Yeah, I feel like you might have an out-of-body experience while, while performing. I hope so. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, That'd be great. Yeah. You know, at the Super Good, because my body's going to be shaking like hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, have the three of you attended a lot of Super Bowls? I know, Reba, you have spent so much time in Vegas, by the way. So she had... Uh, the longest running country residency in Vegas. You should actually be hosting this. So I guess I'm grateful that they let me do this. But yeah, what have your experiences been at Super Bowls in the past? Well, I've gotten to go to one mm -hmm. in uh, Tempe, Arizona in 95 when the Dallas Cowboys played. And so getting to come back here. But I love Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. My first time here was in 83 with the Statler Brothers opening uh, up for them at the MGM Grand. And getting to come back now to sing at the Super Bowl, the first time that the Super Bowl has been in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, Nevada. It's never been in Nevada, in the state of Nevada. So this is a first for a lot of things. And I'm just tickled to pieces to be a part of it. <laughs> Tickled to pieces. I'm stealing that one. I, okay. really, I really like that. Post, what about you? Have you had a lot of Super Bowl experiences? No, ma'am. Um, You're so be polite. My first You're one. so That's polite. Right. It's so yeah, strange. Yeah, exactly. yeah. This will be, be my first one. How is that possible, by the way? It's a great question. Well, let's see. It's, Just so busy all the time? Or? Jacket. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, next year we got it. But, um, yeah, huh? <laughs> uh, but I love Vegas. Uh, Vegas doesn't love me. Uh, but you want to tell us about any Vegas time. experiences you had? Oh, uh, no. The couple casinos could tell you about them. Okay. <laughs> they, the casinos love me. You know. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, how about you? Any Super Bowl experiences prior to this? Mm, any Super Bowl experiences prior to this? I remember being in kindergarten, I think, when uh, the Chargers went to the Super Bowl. You have memories from time. kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I did last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big one. I just remember it being painted on a mural wall and everybody was like, you should be super proud. And I was like, okay, I am. So I have that memory. And then my father, I mean, he, you know, I've been a Lions fan for a long time. So <laughs> I have that memory from this playoffs. But there was yeah. One, what, did you hear that one single cheer? <laughs> right. That was really sad. Like, no was other Lions oh, no, fans in the audience. <laughs> So, you know, once you are done with your performances, you get to sit back and enjoy the halftime show. Any thoughts on what's coming? Have you ever seen Usher perform before? Any of you? Any clips or anything? Yes, clips, for sure. I've never actually seen him live. So what, are you, what are you expecting, Andrew? Just, 
I mean, Usher's a legend, so I'm expecting an immaculate performance voice. You know, he's an incredible singer, incredible performer, dancer, so I expect to be fully inspired. <laughs> it's gonna be really, really an incredible show. Reba, what are you planning for the rest of your time in Vegas? Oh, well, eat. You know, go see as many shows as you can. You eat. The food is spectacular. Maybe hit a little shopping, everyone, a little, little bit. You got Hopefully. some plans? You should take Post with you. It seems like you How only spend time well, at the All casino. my money, uh, you know. You already blew all your money thing. on this jacket <laughs> yeah, right there. And your boots. You want to show them your boots? Yes, ma'am. Sure, why not? Yeah, see? <laughs> these, are, these are the you next, can't tell. next year specials. Next year specials. <laughs> Uh, we'll go yeah. shopping. We'll right. have fun. I would love that. I would right. rather go shopping than um, just back to the Vegas thing. Yeah. <laughs> full, <laughs> More the tables. But, the yeah. full Vegas experience. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm really looking forward to this. So we also do, for you, have some questions from our youth reporters. Oh, yeah. Should we get into that? It's cool. That. All right. Let's do this. So our first question is going to be from Kyan Moy from Big Brothers Big Sisters. Hi, Kyan. Hello. My name is Kyan Moy. I'm a little from Big Brothers Big Sisters Association of Southern Nevada. My first question is for you, Reba. Okay. What is one mentorship moment that has therefore changed your life? Oh my gosh, just one? <laughs> wow, I've had a lot of mentors, thank God, in my career, my life. Mom and Daddy, they, they said, when you say you're gonna do something, you do it. You stick with what you say. You can't back down and you can't back out. So I've carried that throughout my life. I've had great mentors professionally in the music business, the Statler brothers, Mel Tillis, Conway Twitty, Red Stegall, and they always say, treat your business like a business. If you hoop it all off, it won't be there with you tomorrow. So treat it like a business and it'll take care of you. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you, Kayan. Our next question is from Brandon Torcado, our super kid correspondent from the Special Olympics here in Vegas. Hey, Post Malone. Um, my first question is, what is the best advice you ever gotten? Good question. <laughs> Reba's answer was so thorough and amazing. <laughs> but Feeling the pressure I, now. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know, the best one I got is, my dad told me, he, you'll, you'll never make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. So just be yourself and um, just do your best at, at you know, uh, everything you do. and. Uh, do it your way and do it with love, you know, I guess. Love. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's <laughs> really yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. So our next question is from young Dylan from Nickelodeon. Hey, Dylan. Hi, guys. I'm a big fan of all of you. Thank you guys so much. Nice to meet you guys. Um, so my question is for uh, Andrew Day. The Super Bowl is being filmed in Bikini Bottom live this year on Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? So how can SpongeBob make the Super Bowl the best day ever? <laughs> Your excitement is everything. <laughs> right? Thank you for the pressure. Uh, first of all, the Super Bowl was never official before being televised from Bikini Bottom. So congratulations to the Super Bowl, first of all. Um, <laughs> Um, secondly, I just think, yeah, free Krabby Patties for everybody, Definitely. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, I don't have any tips to offer you on Sunday. There's literally nothing I can tell you to do except to have a great time, right? I wouldn't even try to make it up. Uh, Reba, Post, and Andra, thank you so much for your time. I'll be tuned in, singing loudly off-key on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> so nice to meet you. So nice Thank to you. Meet you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Yes, Record setting, chart topping, a bona fide hit maker. This is one performance, 30 years in the making. Take that and rewind it back. Okay! <laughs> My favorite Usher song is Yeah! 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 Yeah!
And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Today, we get to hear directly from Usher about what this moment means to him. Please join me in welcoming Usher. Hey, everybody, how you guys Hello, doing? Hello, good morning. Good to see you. Come, see you come get comfortable here. Absolutely. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. You know, but as I was watching you walk up there, I realized it is really strange to see you walk onto a stage, to see you descending from the rafters and landing in a split, normal, roller skating backwards on the stage, normal, but walking, it just doesn't look right. So hopefully this is the last time we have to see you walk onto the stage. You know, in 2011, you made a, a cameo at the halftime show. Yeah. And it was so incredible. And I'm wondering, what is your memory of that performance? Um, man, oddly enough, there was a moment that only I think I remember. My um, hand got caught in the, the wire that was holding me like 30 feet in the air. And I almost missed my first mark. I was like, oh my God, don't let this malfunction cause me to miss something. But um, that was one. And the second was uh, afterwards and how amazing it felt to be in front of that many people and feel the energy. Um, so much so that it made me you know, really passionate about eventually getting this moment that I'm getting ready to have. But it was really fueled by being able to be just in that moment with, uh, with the Black Eyed Peas. I, you know, I wonder that, and I would say, watching that performance, it stuck with me that I've watched it a few times. I would have never realized that you almost got stuck there because you're such an incredible showman. What I remember was you leaping over Will I Am's head, clearing it by a couple of feet, and landing in a perfect split. split. And I thought, <laughs> this man has to headline the halftime show one day. So at that moment, you were already visualizing yourself yeah. headlining the show. Yeah, you know, sometimes um, affirmations and words of confirmation isn't enough. You have to like put in the work. Uh, but great that um, Jay-Z and uh, the Super Bowl would have me uh, be able to be there to entertain the world. Las Vegas has been amazing for me. Having 100 sold out shows at a residency and to have the next one be the crescendo, which is the Super Bowl um, with Apple is, is really, really, really given my time here in Las Vegas an incredible button at the end. You know? Yeah, this is the kind of thing, you couldn't plan this out, right? It feels like some of these things just have to fall into place. And yeah. this performance truly has been 30 years in the making. You know, you dropped your first album in 1994, you followed it up with multiple classic albums and hits, like you mentioned, coming off this huge residency only to perform on music's biggest stage. How does it feel 30 years in to still be hitting brand new heights in your career? It feels amazing. Um, you know, this being, because I'm putting my album out actually on the 9th. So, um, you know, this, this is just really a testament of dedication. Um, I, I, I don't have this moment by myself. All of my fans that I bring with me, each and every person that had anything to do with the music, the creativity, everybody is a part of this celebratory moment. Um, but what I feel, is that this is only the beginning because I launched that album as an independent artist and I will be, up until this date, the only independent artist who's ever performed the Super Bowl halftime show. So um, this is a beginning. This is a new beginning for me. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a testament to your hard work, right? The longevity you've had and the legacy you've created. I think we live in a time when so many artists feel pressure to have a viral moment, you know, now. Everything has to be now, but we've seen you build this over time. And so that's incredible. And so is this also a moment for you to just sit back and re reflect on all the things you've had to maneuver to get to this point? Yeah, but I got to do it in 13 minutes. <laughs> and that, that makes it a bit difficult, but... You seem uh, like a man who loves a challenge. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it definitely has been a challenge to squeeze 30 years into 13 minutes. Yeah, but, but how did you approach that then? Picking um, the right songs, the this, choreography, the perfect set for 13 minutes. Um, 
you know, there's been these fantasy lists that have been going out and people trying to figure out what song I'm going to perform first, middle, last, who's going to come on the stage with me. Yeah. What I did is I, I was very mindful of my past, celebrating my present, which is here in Las Vegas, and thinking about where we're headed in the future. Um, and that was really the, the idea. Uh, what songs do I feel people know me for? What songs have been a celebration um, of all of the journey of what life and love and emotion has been offered in my music? You know, th that was the, the idea. Um, I thought about a few moments that were special in dance. I thought about some things that I had created here in Las Vegas, i.e. skating and doing things that I had not you know, done on stage up until this point. Uh, to be able to share that with the world. Uh, for everybody that you know heard about my show in Las Vegas, you'll now get a chance to see some of what I did here, but you're gonna get the best of it because it's before 60,000 people in this room yep. and hopefully another 180,000 people, 80 million people for the world to see. Roller skating in front of 60,000 people, yeah. so casual. I no don't, pressure. No pressure. But that's the thing, you have done this so much that it is in your blood, right? You've put in those 10,000 hours. So I imagine that once you step out there, it feels natural. And to your point of this being, it's a celebration for OG fans like me. I have been listening to you my entire life, it feels like. But there's a whole audience who's gonna be seeing you for the very first time, which is so exciting. Yeah. How, I guess, how did you factor that into the performance? Also just that brand new audience seeing Usher for the first time. Um, I wanted to put on a show that I felt would represent my idea of creativity. Yeah. What I've been able to do is bring a great deal of Atlanta and the melting pot that it is, uh, musically, culturally, uh, to, to Las Vegas. Um, you know, that is the source that has been fueling me for these years creatively. So why not make certain that the rest of the world, rather they're seeing me for the first time, or either they're celebrating because we've been, you know, listening to me, you've been listening to my music from, for these years, um, you know, to make certain that it, at least what I'm putting together is something that would be entertaining. Um, as I said before, if you've not seen me or you've been with me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you are just a true showman in every sense of the word, and you're a rare breed of artist. We have very few artists who have the level of skill and talent that you do to sing and dance so well at the same time. And I wonder, what is it that is motivate you to put so much time and effort into becoming such an excellent performer? The fact that I said I believed it, mm -hmm. and to see that out is something that the nine-year-old who believed in me uh, deserves because I didn't have any of this. All I had was my vision. All I had was the idea that someday I would have fans. All I had was the idea that someday I'd find a record. All I had was the idea and the vision that eventually an audience would show up. You know those kids who like yeah. take a mic in hand and they're <laughs> singing and they're like believing in themselves and they look in the mirror and they're singing to an audience that's not there. I'm that kid at nine years old. Um, that had this dream that this moment and many of the moments that I've had in my career would, would come true. Right. Yeah. Th that dream, th my earliest memory of you is on Star Search. I don't know yeah. if anyone remembers that show. I think that was in the early 90s. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, even back then, you've had it. So, you know, in any moments, I think for an ambitious person, a person who wants to be great, who wants to master their craft, there are gonna be highs and lows. How have you navigated some of those moments? I think for artists who are looking at you now thinking, wow, one day I hope I can be as great as Usher, what advice would you give to them? I would hope that, um, that what I have found resonates on many levels for artists or people, period, that what you put in, you get out. Right. Um, and, and that's it, you know? You know, I, I've been motivated, honestly, by artists uh, like Michael Jackson and the fact that, you know, he was a hard worker, um, motivated by athletes like Michael Jordan and the dedication that he, you know, he put into his craft and his, his skill. He was received not only accolade, but also to recognition that would make him a legend. And, you know, that's what I've always hoped for myself, that you know, maybe someday I'd be recognized in the same light and in the same 
title uh, as those people I just mentioned. Well, Usher, I'm gonna say that this is the day. This is the day. You've put in 30 years of work and for anyone who hasn't had a chance to see or experience it, I'm excited. I'm truly excited and a little bit jealous of anyone who's gonna be seeing it <laughs> for the very first time on Sunday. You know, um, at this point in your career, you have transcended any one genre, superstar status, right, because of the work, but you were born of R&B culture, and it's a culture that is so influential. R&B is everywhere, but it still doesn't get the due credit. So is it important to you to be rapping R&B on the Super Bowl halftime stage? It's nice uh, to be in any category, uh, but not to be categorized is what I'd always hoped. Um, that R&B as a trait and as a style, as a genre, as an emotion, as a spirit, um, be it, it being found through gospel music, jazz, rhythm and blues, blues and then R&B, that then created all these other genres of music we don't understand how relevant R&B has been to the development of the industry that we have. And the artists and the creatives that have been a part of that, that they didn't get recognized either. So I'm happy that R&B gets the stage on Sunday. I'm happy that R&B and rhythm and blues uh, gets to, and, and the, the matter of what it is as song and perf dance performers, uh, it gets uh, that recognition that it deserves. Um, I'm honored, but don't want to be categorized as just an R&B artist. I'm an artist who loves music. I'm an artist who's lived through my emotional experiences and was able to share it through this, this, um, this genre. Um, but I wanted to, to speak to the entire world that if you believe in something and you put the work in, you can have whatever you want. You know, you can go and try and create anything that you want, rather that then becomes popular music or that becomes like, oh, this is a, you know, and I'm a piano and an and a Afro beats um, merge that becomes this new version of R&B. Who knows, whatever it is. I've tried so many things my entire career and I've just managed to be able to gather people who celebrate my music and celebrate my experiences and maybe they tied to theirs. Maybe they got married to a song. Maybe they fell in love to a song. Maybe they made love to a song. You know, maybe they you know celebrated and laughed and had an incredible time. Maybe they cried. Maybe they hurt. Maybe they got a chance to be confident in a way uh, that they didn't have before they listened to that song. That's what R&B has been to me. And I hope that the rest of the world can celebrate it in the way that I've celebrated it. That's so beautiful. We'll definitely be celebrating with you. Yeah. You know, it's been incredible watching you push yourself over these 30 years and push boundaries, you know, and does it ever feel scary sometimes? It's not always easy to try something new with the whole world watching, but that's never stopped you, you know? How do you push yourself to do that? Um, you know what, I'm still trying to figure it out. The reality is I just, I have this idea that if you manage to collaborate with people who are just as passionate as you, you're gonna create something amazing. Um, you know, I push myself because that's just a choice. I want to be great. I want to set standards. I want to be a standard um, that is seen through my passion. My passion for music, my passion for creativity, and then rather that becomes something that's artistic by way of, you know, the videos that we create or the narratives that are inside of the music that then become something else. TV series, it's, you know, you look at, you know, people like 50 Cent, right? He creates power. Right, you heard the music first, and then you then see the, vi the visuals. Um, I'm hoping that I can do more things like that with with the brands, you know, that I created through these songs, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a ma it's a matter of managing to, um, you know, monetize at the same time, emotionally give people an escape. You know, when you look at a movie, you 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 relate to it. You hear a song, you relate to it. It becomes a, a um, an assistant and your emotional whatever it is, right? You're crying or you're laughing, you know? So for me, it's more than just music. It's, it's, it's all of those things. Um, most importantly, it's a connection, right? That's what I've always wanted, to have a connection to this audience of people that I might not necessarily see every day, but when they hear this song, we're connected. 
we're connected and it takes us back to such special moments. I was thinking recently about, you know, I'm hoping you might do my boo when you got on stage and, you know, Bay, we finally re retired that, thankfully. I would love it if boo made a comeback. Like you've created <laughs> these, these cultural moments that you're right, it's, it's connections and it takes us back to those special moments. And it's just amazing how much you've already accomplished, but I know for, you know, an, an ambitious person, a creative person, there is almost always more so what are some of the things you are visualizing next? You also have the tour coming up. Like, what are you visualizing in the next couple of years? Um, I visualize in this next few years that there will be more um, opportunity to build here in Las Vegas. Um, I love this city. Um, you know, when I received the key, I started trying to open doors and, um, you know, trying to figure out ways to do more things that activate this immersive experience that I felt like I had for an underserved audience uh, that want to have a certain experience, that enjoy the, you know, the curation of the world that I created when I was here in Las Vegas. Where does that lead me? I don't know, maybe it's businesses, maybe it's more shows, maybe it's shows that I curate, maybe it's festivals like the Lovers and Friends Festival, maybe it's, you know, um, hotels, maybe it's, you know, a different idea and standard for artists who came from this world and then created business here in this town, you know? So much to look forward to. Yeah. Anything is possible. I mean, you got Tim Cook to make, oh, his, no, it's to gonna make his acting debut, oh, yeah. you know, while trying to find you. So I think anything really is possible. And it's possible if you believe it. Yeah. yeah. Believing and putting in the work. I don't think you can say that enough times. So people don't get to see the work that you put in behind the scenes, but your friends know, you yeah. know, uh, Luda and Lil John definitely know, like mm -hmm. you've collaborated with these people and there's so many people who have been so important on your journey until this point. So when it came to thinking about putting together the Super Bowl show, was it easy? If you're gonna have guest performers, I don't know anything, you know, were there people you thought of immediately to join you on that stage if you're having performers? Of course. <laughs> Was it hard? There's a lot of them. You've had a lot of good friends that you've worked and collaborated with. I think I made it easy for myself when I decided to have like features on songs that became hit records. <laughs> so that, um, that gave me the greatest point of reference. Um, but um, here's what's beautiful is that Apple has been following me throughout this entire process. So we're uh, in the process of you know, figuring out how we're going to share it with you break the internet by that conversation, but there's also to a documentary crew that's been collecting all of the moments that have happened. Um, you know, so there's cameras around us at all times looking at, you know, the process that we went through. You know, you get a chance to see from the first moment that I got the call all the way up into the moment that I walk off the stage. Wow. Yeah, um, at least that's the idea. Um, but I, um, I am definitely, you know, went through a lot of ideas of who I would have uh, shared this moment with me. And um, I do feel like the people who are gonna share it deserve just as much recognition for what they do in their careers. Uh, rather we have collaborated together or rather they've had moments of their own. There's also two very special things that um, I've woven into this entire performance. Things that speak to culture, things that speak to quality, things that speak to my creativity, um, you know, as you know, I'm skating. So the idea of being able to skate on uh, skates that I created is something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing. Um, but this, you know, this has just been an amazing time in my life. And I'm so happy that, you know, God and the universe has kind of led me to this moment, what it means to other people and, and how they believe in themselves. You know, that's up to them, but me, I'm really a product of my belief. I'm a, I'm a product of uh, believing that I could come to this city and I could do something amazing. And it's happened. And I ain't done here. I'm gonna continue to keep going. Uh, past, present, future is my tour. And um, I plan on now sharing a bit of this energy that I created here with the rest of the world. Looking forward to it. And you know, once you get off that halftime show stage, we have a new album to enjoy. Yeah. Album number nine, yeah, yeah. coming home, yeah. you know? How does it also feel then yeah, to step off and be able to share this, this new body of work? And also there's some really nice, the city of Atlanta is gonna be going crazy when you're performing. Um, there's also some beautiful moments, a lot of artists from Atlanta even featured on the project. So 
What is that like for you? I mean, it wasn't easy to do, but I turned Vegas to Atlanta. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I took that V and turned it upside down. You yep. know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, or either took the A and turned it to a V. But, um, you know, that, that was, you know, the influence that Atlanta has had on me so much so that I collected everything that um, I experienced, I benefited from in Atlanta and brought that culture uh, to, to Las Vegas and now to the rest of the world on the Super Bowl uh, halftime show. It's gonna be incredible. Yeah, but the album, is which we were talking about, right? You know, it's, it's just really the, the last, um, really five years of my life. There was a huge stop in the middle of that because of the pandemic and, and what that offered. Uh, and then coming back out of it, I needed a little bit of motivation which is why I decided to put my shows on sale in Las Vegas. And there was no promise, it was a real bold move. Um, and, you know, I, d I decided to move forward. And since then, since that moment of belief, this has happened. And now I'm ready to share some of what I was working on before and what I worked on after I decided to start my shows here in Las Vegas. My ninth album, Coming Home, um, working and building with L.A. Reid, who is my partner, uh, and Mega, our, our label. I'm our first, I'm our first artist. And um, again, as I said, I'm the first independent artist to ever play the Super Bowl. So inspirational. I feel like I need to go build something big. I'm inspired <laughs> by this conversation. Um, thank you for answering my questions. We actually have a few more questions for okay. you from our youth reporters as well. Okay, cool. All right, so let's jump into those. We're gonna see our friend Kayan again. Hey, Kayan. Hello. What's up, man? I am a little, my name's Kayan Moy. I'm a little from Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Southern Nevada. My question is for you, Usher. I have a great mentor in my life and I'm very grateful for him. My question is, as a black positive role model, how can you help me navigate my journey to success? Hmm. Well, first and foremost, um, finding a, a person to motivate you and support you um, is incredible. Uh, ha everybody has a mentor. Everybody has someone who will support them. Um, the one thing I've been talking about is your personal belief in yourself and creating a plan without necessarily establishing exactly what your destination is. Your plan should be based on your passion. If you are passionate about what you wanna do, then it's not just about accolade or winning an award or a reward or anything. It's about the journey through that passion. That's the one thing I would say, belief in yourself. Uh, and then just having an understanding of the history and the people who have done what you want to do, paying attention to the steps that they made so that you can learn and benefit from where they've gone um, and now where they've arrived to be a motivator for you. Wow. Thank you, Usher. Yeah, you're Can't welcome. Can't wait for your album tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> so many gems there. Thank you, Kayan. And so our next question is from Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hello. Hello, What's Usher. Uh, I have one question for you. What is your favorite thing about performing? Performing? Yes. Performing? <laughs> <laughs> The moment of connection between me and the audience, um, you know, some, some, and in some ways it becomes like, you know, just kind of like the process, the process. I never lose that, that connection to the audience to be able to hear them and feel them. Um, it's the thing that is most important. Uh, making the song is, is great, but that reaction, that connection, that, serenade that ability to connect and hear them and feel their energy is the most important part uh, of the experience um, of making music and then offering music thank you brandon hearing you say that is amazing again understanding that everything is so intentional because that's one of the special things about your shows it always feels like you are singing directly to me it feels one-on-one -on -one, even in front of such a big audience so yeah. it's nice knowing where that comes from. So we do have one more question for okay. you. This one is from young Dylan from Nickelodeon. Hi again, Dylan. Hi, hi Usher, nice to meet you. I just wanna first start off with, I'm such a big fan of you. You inspire me, it's a blessing being in your presence. My family loves you and you're one of my favorite R&B artists. <laughs> so my first question is, um, yeah, young Dylan from Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon wants to know, 
can you please give us an Usher confession? <laughs> <laughs> can I give you an Usher confession? <laughs> I love this one. Um, f specifically for Nickelodeon, right? <laughs> We're going to keep it age appropriate. <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, it was always a dream of mine um, to be slimed as a kid. Yeah, no, I watched, I watched it just like all of us in here. And to get that green goop over my head was mm -hmm. something that I really, I just wanted to be able to say I did. And by the time I finally made it to the Nickelodeon Awards, they just didn't even do it anymore. I was like, oh. that sucks. I know, man. But, Dylan, um, what can you do about that? Can you? Hey, I got you. It? Hey, it's slime in the back. I got you. Nickelodeon keeps <laughs> the slime on. I got you. I can get you some. But thank you so much. For You're the, welcome, thank you so man. much for your answer. Absolutely. All right, so we know that's one more thing on your bucket list, getting officially slimed, and young Dylan is going to make that happen. We really, really appreciate it. Look, you know, it's been a beautiful journey to this point, 30 years in the making. Now all you have to do just go out there and just have an incredible time on Sunday, right? Yes. Congratulations. Really, really enjoy the celebrations. The OG fans are definitely going to be locked in. Absolutely. And I look Thank you. To it. I look <laughs> Thank to you it. to Usher and to all of our guests who joined us today. Uh, of course, we can't wait to see Usher take the stage at the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show. And shortly after the performance, you'll be able to stream the full halftime show on Apple Music. While you wait, you can also enjoy his catalog and spatial audio. Listen, watch, and sing all things Usher only on Apple Music. And before we go, Usher, we do have one more quick teaser for them. So here's the teaser of Usher's epic road to the Super Bowl featuring 14 of his biggest hits and a few friends coming together to get him to the halftime show. I'm gonna make something right now. Hey. Oh, we in here, where you going? Christopher. Something happened last night, Tim. Luda lost Usher. Tim, I'm sorry, bro. Wait. Tim. Usher fans are left to wonder after rumors that his friends, seen here, lost the singer. Oh, no. Usher! There are some very powerful people that wish he would disappear. You guys are screwed. So we can cover more ground if we split up. He's gotta be here somewhere. We got a halftime show to save. Has anybody seen the Usher? Jay Bowser? Yeah, where'd you get that chain? This chain? That's you will find him or you will find him. Yeah.